Hey guys, it's James from Jaw Dropping Science, and today I'm going to help you understand what it takes to get into CNC as a beginner by reviewing this $250 desktop router. This router is the same smart Gen Mitsu 3018 Pro, which is capable of doing detailed carvings on wood, acrylic, and even some soft aluminum. Here's a table of contents for this video in case you're eager to get to a certain point. If you appreciate this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm just getting started on YouTube and your engagement is critical for the algorithm, so thank you very much. I'm going to be doing a full unboxing and review of this router so you can decide if it's the right device for you. If you do end up wanting to purchase it, you can use the coupon code JAENGINEER for 5% off. The link's in the description. Knowing CNC manufacturing is a great skill to have on any resume, especially for engineers. But I will say, learning how to operate a machine like this takes some time. So I provided some great resources in the description of this video to help you get the most out of this machine. With that said, let's jump right in. The 3018 Pro is a device that must be assembled, which I was all for as long as it keeps the price low and the assembly is not too difficult, which it wasn't. I didn't do any prior research on how to assemble before and the whole process took me about two hours with filming. I laid out all the components and checked with the manual to make sure I wasn't missing anything. I would describe the instruction manual as helpful enough. It wasn't super detailed with step-by-step -step instructions for every twist of a nut or bolt, but the pictures really helped demonstrate how the pieces would go together. Honestly, I actually enjoyed not having super long and detailed instructions because most of the pieces went together intuitively and making the manual any longer would have just consumed more of my time. The entire assembly went very smoothly for me, with the exception of the mounting of the spindle, which I'll show you in a second. The instructions told me to pry the plastic piece and I was definitely being too gentle with it, as you can see here, but I obviously didn't want to break anything. After about five minutes of working it, I finally got it. This was unfortunate, but since I didn't break anything, it obviously wasn't a deal breaker. After completing the assembly, I was surprised at how sturdy it was considering how cheap this product is. The 3018 in the name means 300 millimeters by 180 millimeter base with 45 millimeters of travel in the Z direction. The wiring might have looked intimidating to some, but there's no soldering, you just plug from the microcontroller to the stepper motor, which is outlined in the manual. A software for running G-code called Candle comes with this device. Go to the software folder to execute the installation. It only takes a few moments. I'll still walk you through the software, but it's only good for running G-code, not building designs. I'll also show you a free and paid version of a design software in a second, but here's what it looks like when you open Candle. Obviously your device needs to be turned on and plugged into your computer, but even then it doesn't always auto-connect. You need to go to service settings and check the COM port. On Windows, you can figure out which COM port you need by going to device manager. Then scroll down to ports, and if you only have one USB device plugged in, then that's the port you need to use, so you type that in here and hit refresh. Now we're good to go and we can get familiar with the jog key. Step determines how far the device will move in one click, while feet is how fast. As you can see, the left and right arrow keys are for the X axis, while the up and down arrow keys are for the Y axis. There's also two additional gray arrow keys. These are for the Z axis, so if I press down, it moves the spindle down. Moving your device manually is something you're always gonna have to do in order to zero your device, which means tell the machine when it's in the right position to start your car. Right here, we can also check that the spindle is working and adjust how fast it is with the bar to the left of that. Now that we're familiar with that, I think it's time to start our test carve. Luckily, Sane Smart gives you a test carve so you don't have to make a design. Obviously, you're gonna wanna make designs, but it's good to verify that you've set up your machine correctly. So now you can see where you want the spindle to start at, so you can use the jog keys to get it right where it wants to be. You also need it to be level with the surface, which is why I'm gonna use a paper technique where you put the paper in between, and then once the spindle clamps it down, then you know you're at the right spot. I had the step set too high, so when I clicked it, it definitely dug into the machine, so not perfectly level. I could tell because when I backed it out, it picked up the piece of paper with me. So then I'm gonna go ahead and change the step size down to 0.1 instead of one. And this will help me get a more accurate zero for my Z axis. If you don't properly zero your Z axis, you might have too large of a chip load on your spindle, which could cause your bit to break or if you're too far above the surface, then you won't dig deep enough into your carve and it won't come out very clear. Now, as you can see, we are going to be good to go. So I'll hit zero X, Y and zero Z. This tells our machine we're in the right starting spot. Lastly, we hit send to send the carve to the device. And as you see, it starts going and we have a real time simulation. I talk more about safety protocols later on, but now is probably a good time to say that you should always stay with your machine while it's operating. There's a number of settings that could be wrong and your bit could break or the toolpath could be headed towards something it shouldn't be and you need to be there to stop it. But anyway, I think this carve worked well for some scrap wood. 
So now I want to jump right into a free software called Carbide Create, which is good for creating text and other designs. This software is for making designs and then you export the G-code created from the software and then run it in Candle, which is different from Easel, which is the paid software. Easel is actually a two-in-one, so it lets you run the machine and make designs all on the same platform. I'll talk more about Easel later. For now on the screen, and I'm gonna start speeding this up, it's just me adjusting all the settings for the tool that I'm gonna use. Honestly, this is one of the reasons I didn't like Carbide Create so much. The software doesn't seem quite as intuitive, and there's a lot of parameters that I didn't quite know and had to consult the internet for. Regardless, it's an incredible tool considering it's free, and if I spent more time, I'm sure I could learn a lot more. I just exported this design as G-code and saved it to a folder. Now I can open this file in Candle just like I did with the Sane Smart Car. Zero my X, Y, and Z axes, and I'm ready to go. Okay, so this is the last software I'm gonna go through, which is Easel. As I mentioned earlier, this is a software you have to pay for, and I'm currently deciding if it's worth it or not. You get 30 free days to try it. Here I am doing a similar carve with the 20 degree and 0.1 millimeter width V-bit that comes with the device. I'll talk more about V-bits in a second. But what I really like about Easel is that it gives you automatic feeds and speeds. For smaller bits, you still want to do your own calculations, but for larger bits, I had no issues whatsoever. To set up your device, it's pretty similar to that of Candle, but you do need to set up the machine by setting in some parameters, which I'll provide to you here. Select Sane Smart, Arduino and G Shield, the smallest rail size, the M8 threaded, other for spindle and input a 9000 rpm value and do not check the dust shoe box because we don't have a dust shoe just like on candle you need to enter your com port so i remember mine's three once connected you can verify your x y and z are working properly obviously i'm not showing you my spindle here but when i press the button it reacts appropriately Easel's UI is definitely something they have going for them. It's very clear what they want from me. We don't have to manually turn on our spindle, so we're gonna to switch to automatic. Here's testing it. Again, you can't see on your screen, but it turned on and off when I pressed that button, so I know it's working. We don't have a homing switch or a Z probe, and I'm gonna do my own test carve, so I'll just click finish. So now we're back on the screen where I have my design, and earlier I specified the depth I wanted. So now I hit carve and we have a similar setup where there's jogging on the right, and then we have to verify some information here on the left. I absolutely love how Easel does this, especially as a beginner. I just feel like this whole setup is very intuitive to make sure you're not forgetting anything. Off screen, I already jogged my machine to its correct starting point, so I can just hit use new position, but right there is where you would have wanted to move it to the correct zero. Now I just need to test the spindle, verify that it's on and hit carve. It turned out great, but now it's time for us to learn about some different types of bits. Here's an overview of the different types of bits I got. I'll explain what each does in a second. So far, we've only worked with the 20 degree 0.1 millimeter V bit that comes with the device. Here's 10 of them. These are the only bits that come with the device. So if you want to do anything other than small detailed carves, you probably want to buy some other bits. Luckily, they aren't very expensive. V bits are only good for engraving. They can't do slots. That's what end mills are good for, which we'll get to in a sec. These red V bits I have have a much larger cutting diameter and different angles. The larger the angle, the more shallow the cut. In addition to having a larger cutting diameter, they also have a larger shaft diameter, which means means you need to get six millimeter collets to work with these. Moving away from V-bits, we have end mills. These are great for cutting out shapes, slots, and many other things. When choosing which bit to use, you need to do some calculations. There's definitely a trade-off between the level of detail you can get and the speed at which you can carve. I'm not gonna get too much into speeds and feeds in this video because there's just too much to cover. I will provide great resources that I've personally used to help you out. It's critical to learn about this, otherwise you're gonna end up breaking bits like I did. Next, I wanted to talk about some equipment recommendations as you watch this machine do some cool carves. First up, I personally think a vacuum is essential to get up all the wood chips. It does come with a brush, but it just takes too much time. Second, I already mentioned this, but you should probably get some other bits so you have more capabilities. Lastly, it's an expensive upgrade, but you can buy a laser module to replace the spindle with, and then you can do CNC wood burning. This carving turned out great, but I was conservative with my speeds and feeds, so it took a while. During this last carve, let's talk about safety. Number one, wear safety goggles. This should be obvious, so no further explanation needed. Number two, watch your fingers. Do not put your hands anywhere near a spinning blade. Number three, if you have long hair, please tie it up. Number four, clamp down your piece securely. Things can fly off if you don't. Lastly, this is mostly for aluminum or acrylic. If you have the wrong settings, it can overheat. 
After about a month with this device, I'd have to say I'm impressed. I've had a ton of fun making some carvings, and I've learned a lot about CNC operation. With such a cheap price point, it's really hard to complain about its relatively low cutting volume, its poorly placed power button, or the fact that you have to assemble it. For that price, you really can't get much credit. Another small gripe I have with it is that the $250 price point is a bit misleading because the odds are you're gonna to wanna to purchase some extra bits to really help you get the most out of this machine, which will increase the total price. However, even when you factor in all those other costs, it's still an incredible value for a computer-aided manufacturing device. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If you still want more information, I wrote an article. It's posted on my website. You can see the link in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.